now, number three, the lunch. What I brought. Oh, La Jolla Summerfest. Yes. What a coincidence. You want to look at that while I grab my Pellegrino? All right. So what That's how you say it. Pellegrino. Pellegrino. It's not okay, Pellegrino. Not sure. it's Songs Pellegrino. of Heaven and Earth, Saturday, August 3rd at 8 p.m., the Baker Baumbaum Concert Hall. That's the big one at um, the Conrad. Oh, this is the Conrad we're yeah. talking about. Yes, yes, of yeah. course. That's right, right. And the this new is Conrad. going to this be... This is the first Summerfest. J.S. Bach, Ich habe genug. Well, that's... A... Right off the bat, I've had enough. <laughs> 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 That's funny. It, it, it actually really promises much better things to come. Uh, Messian. Oh, the quartet for the end of time. Oh, okay. And uh, written in uh, prison camp in World War II. L'immortalité de Jésus. Oh, the, 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 it's a movement from the quartet from the, oh, from the end of time. Movement. And the Mahler Symphony Number no. Four. Oh, it's the beginning. Okay. Susanna Phillips, soprano. Does that ring a bell with you? Mm -mm. No. Should uh, look her up. Aaron Keefe and Benjamin Bielman's violin. So two violins, viola. I think Aaron Keefe was in a, in the festival. Cello and Mozart bass. Festival. So it's string quintet uh -huh. plus um, a flute piccolo, uh, an, an oboe English horn, a clarinet and bass clarinet, bassoon, percussion, piano, harmonium, and, and harmonium. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 12 players. Oh, hey, man. We have a guest. Yes, we have a cat. Special guest. Um, you're about to get edited. Well, they have an open rehearsal on Wednesday, July 31st. Oh, is it? Uh, I, I had asked Allison, actually, about possibly getting into a, a uh, rehearsal posing as a young conductor. Ah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, you better get some makeup. <laughs> And the girdle. Right. Oh. <laughs> so, very funny. Well, yes, the, the girdle more than the makeup, I think. I can use shoe polish on my hair. Um, <laughs> like the, the... So there's an the open, fugitive, re there's an open right? rehearsal. Yes, there's uh, an open I think that would be rehearsal. something that would be very worthwhile attending. Um, Page 21 for details. I'm a big fan of the, uh, of the Mahler 4. Strange. What? It says see page 21 for details, but page 21 is a bunch of donors. Well, those are the details that matter. Well, they are. <laughs> but I don't see how that what that has to do with uh, open rehearsal. They probably got the page wrong. Is It um, It says dig deeper into the music there. Where? Oh, next page. Oh. Uh, Summerfest Encounters. No. Hmm. Oh, well. Well, in any event. But, yeah, Wednesday, that's... At what time? Uh, 3.20 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. So 50 minutes. You get 50 minutes. I, I'll uh, see you there. There's another one, open rehearsal. Now, what concert is this? This is Reflection. <laughs> uh, this is going to be another uh, uh, another uh, although this is subject of um, harangue is, uh, is silly, pretentious titles for concert series or event series or even individual concerts. Yeah. Come on, guys. It does have the Shostakovich Symphony Number no. 15 in an arrangement for violin, cello, piano, and celeste, and percussion. So we're we're getting full symphonies in chamber music in cha in chamber music reductions. Interesting. That's I like interesting. the idea. We'll we'll see. Uh, let's see. Prelude, prelude, prelude. Well, let me let me just by point of comparison, mm -hmm. let me just float out. Uh, Something which I regard as as symphonic, which is writ in in dimension and okay. construction, which is written for a string quartet, which is the Verdi string quartet. Okay, that is a terrific piece of music. If you've never listened to it, I highly recommend the Verdi string. Eminently uh, both listenable and entertaining. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a vivacious piece of music. <laughs> I mean, it would you could orchestrate that out for right. for a for a chamber orchestra or even a full orchestra, and it would be great music. Yeah, and it would be a four movement Haydn sized symphony. It does often go the other direction. It goes from chamber music to a larger orchestra quite 
quite regularly. Dasho well, for strings. Um, the Borodin. Da, well, yeah, but I'm talking da, about. Da, 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 da. I'm talking about multiple movement pieces, like. Um, okay. For That's instance, the, the 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 Guno Petit Symphony for Winds. That's a piece right there that could easily be elaborated for a full orchestra because it, it really is a it's a small symphony uh -huh. for nine nine pieces. Right. But you could do a lot more with it orchestrally if you wanted to. So I don't mind it going the other way if it gets the work you know in front of an audience. It, um, yeah, it looks like they're doing the complete Beethoven string quartets in one day. No. <laughs> So Beethoven Complete Quartets one, some Friday, August 9th. Okay. And that's uh boy, they're not going in any order though. String Quartet Opus 1895 and 127. So it's early, middle, late. Okay, so that makes sense. So you don't get all the early ones on one. Uh then number two is on uh August 10th. Mm-hmm. And Three is on August 16th. Is there more than three? I thought he wrote more string quartets than that. Nine string quartets? I thought he did too. Well, maybe this is this season's installment. We'll have to look into that. It could be. Yeah, they could be doing it this year and next. Right. Because next year's 2020 would actually be the, the birthday, the 250. Right. Christened on December 17th, 1770. No one knows when he was born. Probably within a matter of days. It, yes, within a matter of days. At the time. Yeah. So that's a brief little La Jolla Music Society preview. That's a very exciting program. That's Could a be, very yeah. exciting program. Yeah. I, I, I didn't really... All I knew about was the Mahler. I didn't really know anything mm -hmm. else. But mm -hmm. three full programs of Beethoven string quartets, yeah. plus a Shostakovich symphony in reduction and the Mahler, yeah. along with... I mean, if you've had enough, along with some other stuff, "Voice of the Whale" by. If if you've had enough by the you know the fir end of the first piece, I mean, I think you're cutting yourself short. But um, what do you mean? Ich habe genug. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I, I will not have had enough by the end of that piece. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll have to uh, to get out there and cover this a little bit. Definitely. I don't think tickets are really that much. See if there's any ticket information here. Uh, I would point out to anybody that, that that is considering coming for the open rehearsal, even if you're even if you're not able to come to the concerts, this is a good opportunity to hear the acoustic of the Conrad, uh, you know, for for free, uh, and and to experience the ambiance of the new hall in in La Jolla. Uh, it's like forty five dollars. The, it's not cheap, but it's, yeah, it's but it's a small hall too. It's a small hall. This is going to be. I mean, I, I'm I'm curious. Is is the Conrad going to be San Diego's Wigmore Hall? I don't know what that means. Wigmore Hall is the the most famous recital hall in London. Okay. Um, and you didn't know. Right. It, it, and it's still it's still in operation. It's in Wigmore Street, and okay. and it's um, it's uh, hosts you know the highest. Right. level of chamber it's it's basically um it's kind of the carnegie hall of london right. at this point because all of the the great theaters of former times the great concert halls are gone queen's hall went in the war mm -hmm. and you know the barbican and the south bank are both productions of the well the barbican is 60s and the south bank is 50s they're not really i've heard no one likes the barbican no, there's nothing to like about the Barbican. Okay. It's hideous, and the uh, and also the the Royal Festival Hall is dead as a doornail. I mean, it's it's kind of a a, a, a an, an affectionately held survivor of the Festival of Britain. Uh, you know, the the exposition that redeveloped the South Bank from an industrial area after the war and sort of okay. brought some brightness into a nation that was still actually undergoing rationing. You know, in the early 1950s. Okay. Um, so. The, but it's not Queen's Hall was where um, Elgar, you know, recorded and conducted. Right, and, and it's and, gone. And Beecham conducted there, and Henry Wood had the first proms were in Queen's Hall. Henry Wood's proms, uh, and that's gone. It the, an incendiary bomb hit hit the oh. roof, 
and lit it on fire. And uh, they had crews on on site, but they it's right next to the be- to old broadcasting and house. And Montgomery firestormed Dresden in retaliation. And, no, that was for Coventry. Oh. But if I I would have firestormed Dresden in retaliation for losing Queens Hall, that was a great hall. I won it. Dresden was beautiful. Well, uh, they already got them. And the, there was no. Yeah, but 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 Ezra Pound already got the Vivaldi manuscripts out of it. So oh, okay. anyway, um, no, we're being <laughs> facetious, of course. But uh, they couldn't. The, the fire mains were broken. The water mains were broken, and they couldn't. Oh. They couldn't save it. Oh well. So anyway, back to the Conrad. But back to Conrad. So so this is this could become San Diego's Wigmore Hall. I mean, as a recital hall, There's, we don't really have a recital hall in in right. in, in San Diego. That's we true. have small. Auditoriums that are used for recital. Mm-hmm. We have, you know, the you could do a recital in the Balboa if you could afford it, but there really isn't a recital-sized hall dedicated strictly to concerts. You know, well, Sherwood was kind, but it just oh, Sherwood great. was terrible. Yeah, I mean, well, no, that no, again, that, but that wasn't that wasn't primarily uh, for music. That was also a film theater and a, yeah. and and it was a wretched place. <laughs> it really was. I, I remember doing an opera in there with Gar Hildebrand uh, and his wife Chrissy Lindsay. I think her name was. And they had a small uh, opera company called uh, uh, Pacific Chamber Opera um, back in the middle '80s, and we did Equat- um, we did Equatro Rustigi by Emmanuel Wolf Ferrari. Oh, and uh, I think I had the role of Maurizio in that. But that was a, a unique opera. And I mean, so they were doing good things, but that hall was just awful. Yeah. It's just awful. I was in a fashion show there. I sang, um, <laughs> I sang Bring Him Home. People, bring Him Home? Bring like, him home. Buy, these, buy these clothes bring and him bring them home. home. Oh, yeah. That there you been go. There. Yeah. God. Bring them on high. <laughs> hear my prayer. <laughs> bring them home. Oh, my gosh. I had a microphone and a camera. Well, I had hair at the time. I had to go to the stylist and get it all uh-huh. done. They were so nice to me, and then they were mean to the models. I asked what was up, and they're like, yeah, they all treat the models mean. Like, they're all mean to them. Like, they're just clothes hangers. They're not people, generally speaking. I don't know. Well, isn't it sort of like they, they treat, really they treat ballerinas mean, too? Don't they? There's like sticks and poking yeah. and things like that. I mean, they just move, you know, yeah. that sort of thing. Yeah. I just remember the ballerinas hanging around outside Covent Garden in... Uh, in smoking uh, cigarettes and smoking drinking c- Diet Coke. Just, well, not even drinking, just smoking cigarettes. And he's standing there in their tutus like this going... <laughs> you know, it's to curtail that appetite. Yeah. yeah. Brutal. All right, hey, let's let's um, wrap this one up. Okay. Um, I mean, uh, so Summerfest is coming summer and we're going to be all over that. But I think we need to branch out into some theater. Uh, well, I, I would be I'd be happy to do that. The theater. We, we know what to... playing the end means. <laughs> well, I mean, the the Globe is going to be doing Shakespeare this mm-hmm. summer, and I think uh, I think um, they're doing Romeo and Juliet. And all's then... well that ends well is uh, or no, as you like it as is on like it, yeah. um, is Soon. on for another another ten days or so. Oh, it's on now. Yeah. Um, but they're doing Romeo and Juliet, and then Starlight is doing West Side Story. That might be a nice. Starlight. Little... Sorry, Moonlight. Moonlight. I thought I was at Starlight's back. No, no. Incidentally, Moonlight. I know. Uh, I, I believe that the San Diego Fringe Festival is aiming to use Starlight Bowl. Ah. And there was an unfortunate incident last week. N- nothing critical, but um, I don't know if you saw this in the news, but one of the giant eucalyptus out in front of the Aerospace Museum fell over in the middle of the night and... and carved two trenches about probably 20 feet apart but right down through the facade of the ticket booth of starlight oh, really? and apparently the fringe festival has been doing some good work good work guys you know, to clean up because i mean starlight's had trees growing in the in the amphitheater you know right. and it sort of reminds me of pictures of old shy park after it been abandoned for you know for 15 20 years and there's like trees growing in the outfield but literally, um, and they've been cleaning up the the amphitheater and getting rid of cutting up stuff like that, and and so that's a little bit of a setback. But it's only cosmetic, thankfully, and it didn't destroy anything; it just marred it. I see. But imagine if that tree had fallen the other way and fallen on the sea dart, you right. know, which is the only one of its kind out in front. Those I love the eucalyptus trees, but they're widowmakers. 
<laughs> they really are. Them and the Bunda Bunda trees. <laughs> and the Bunyas. Bunyas. The Bunyas. Bunyas. Yes. That's right. And more, more coming about Bunya. We need to branch out into trees we as do. well, into the urban canopy, and sort of highlight some of the, uh, uh, some of the notable arboreal um, uh, features of our, our, our civic landscape. Okay. No, I'm really a big fan of. Bunya I know trees, you, you know. are. I'm just reminding me of a Pon- Monty <laughs> Python episode where all throughout they would just suddenly cut to the large, the large, <laughs> the large. Number one, the large, the large, <laughs> the boomia. That's right. The large. All right, you ready? Classical Rebellion. The Lodge. <laughs> <laughs>